truth. I'm part of I'm 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 Unforbidden Truth. I'm I'm podcast. I'm 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 Unforbidden Truth. I'm I'm podcast. I'm I'm Welcome to Unforbidden Truth. I'm Andrew. Today I'll be doing a Q&A with the Alaskan Avenger Jason Vukovic with questions from listeners. Jason is serving a 28-year prison sentence for attempted assault and robbery, five years being suspended for attacking three pedophiles after using the sex offender registry to track them down. If you go back to the November 23rd, 2021 episode, you can listen to a full-length interview I did with Jason. Here's my Q&A with the Alaskan Avenger Jason Vukovic. I got about like sixteen or so questions for you if you're uh, if you're good to go. Sure. Yeah. All right. So, the first question uh, from the listeners that I've got are: Are we entitled to do justice with our own hands, however well intended we are? Are we entitled to do justice with our own hands? Um, well, I will tell you this. Uh, I will tell you this, in a well-ordered society, uh, laws uh, are intended to be followed, okay? Um, And we have all sort of agreed together in this country that we're going to let the justice system mete out justice. So with that being understood and said, uh, probably the best way to handle things uh, going forward for myself would be to address things legislatively try to change laws that I don't think are right or correct Um, however I will say uh, that is a matter of individual choice and you should be aware of consequences and any sort of community service in that regard is going to come with steep cost personal cost Uh, so you should definitely be aware of that so if you had the uh, opportunity to do everything over again, would you do so, or would it remain the same? Uh, speaking of your convictions. Um, you know, again, the thing is, uh, uh, sort of the next step in that being aware of consequences and the steep personal cost is, bro, after the, the steep personal cost comes opportunity. And, uh, you know, in the meantime, Granted, again, at great personal loss, uh, has come opportunity. And uh, with that opportunity, I've been able to reach out to uh, other people and speak to people that were in need and things like that. So looking back, if I could change something, um, that particular moment, that particular day, uh, I would not have had a hammer in my backpack that I used to break the sidelight of this guy's house to get in. Um, because I never intended for violence to escalate to that level. Um, and the fact that it escalated to that level is something I, I regret. So this so this next question is like a, a two-parter uh, per se. So do you believe in God and do you believe that you are doing God's will? Or is it that your childhood trauma has brought such hopelessness that you loathe your own soul? Or if you're an atheist... Um, I'd like to know by what standard you use to measure what is righteous and what is evil. Damn. Okay. (laughs) We have a, we have a budding, uh, socioscientist out there. Good question. Um, so do I believe in God? I believe in the interconnectedness of all things. And I have experienced that. Uh, I, I believe in the invisible or energetic plane because I have experienced it. Um, I think uh, uh, righteousness and evil is determinant um, by the individual first and then by society in general. Um, so certainly I can look back and apply all sorts of religious terminology to what transpired Um, I could also tell you that my intuition has been on point a number of times and has led me to a number of places. Um, And perhaps that's related to childhood trauma. One of the side effects is that it creates a bond um, between the abused and the abuser. So 
So what that means practically is the abused become sensitive to other abusers, things that sound like abusers, that look like abusers, that seem like abusers. You become sensitized to them, which allows you to interact or find them different places you go, whereas other people would not be able to do so. Um, so was it uh, righteous anger and me doing God's work? Um, perhaps. Um, if you were a Christian and you had been abused as a kid, that's exactly what you'd say. Um, was it me um, having the good fortune of doing something for a young kid that I wish would have been done for me? Certainly. Um, when I was a young kid, if some tattooed up badass would have booted the door in and beat the brakes off of the guy that was molesting me, I would have felt summarily blessed. So, have you been diagnosed with any DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder, or any personality disorders? And if so, has witchcraft or mysticism played any role in it? Um, so, no, I've never had, and trust and believe, I've been psychoanalyzed thoroughly at least two or three times along the way. Um, so, no, I don't have any mental disorders other than PTSD, if you classify that as a mental disorder. Um, but I will tell you that uh, uh, outside of that, some sort of clinical diagnosis, I will tell you that uh, years of my life I was a drug addict or a drug user, um, and under the influence of drugs, people should be very aware that similar uh, characteristics or similar um, patterns, thought patterns or behaviors can emerge um, as the sort of mental disorder that was, that was mentioned there. This next question is kind of interesting. Uh, this is this is all from the same person. I'm also curious of what he believes will happen to a world with Jeffrey Epstein's and company, the protecting enabling of predators and Catholicism, and the Hollywood pedophile problem. Um. Well, we are, and we and I are experiencing a world uh, with those sort of predators in it. Um, and what happens is it takes a very, very, very long time for the abused to recognize that they constitute a large and powerful body when unified. Um, it also takes a very long time for us to become responsible and realize <clears throat> that the laws in place and the powers that be were enacted during our lifetimes, which means that we are responsible for changing them. Um, so um, in, in a certain way, um, the stigma associated with this sort of abuse needs to quickly be uh, transcended and we need to all group together and address the people in power together as a group. Um, that's that's going to be the only way we can change it, I will tell you that. Did you grow up in the foster care system? Uh, no, I was adopted. And then, uh, um, uh, so I was raised by an adoptive stepfather. Um, and then my older brother, when he ran away from home in the midst of this abuse, I think he was 15 years old, he was in the foster care system for a couple of years. Uh, this next, this next question slash comment is written just as is. Not that I think that he should, but I'm curious if he feels any remorse or regret. Um, do, let me see. Do I f say this one more time, please? Um, Question. not that I think he should, but I'm curious if he feels any remorse or regret in regards to the crimes. Oh, okay. So I sort of answered that prior, but, uh, in looking back and again, this is directly re related to opportunity, um, that has come my way, um, opportunity to co-author a book with a professor of criminology opportunity to speak to thousands of other abuse survivors that have reached out to me. Um, um, it caused me to, to be grateful for what transpired, number one. Number two, understanding that I was able to be that for one or two other kids is a privilege and an honor, um, and, and I'll stand beside that statement until the day I die. Um, the fact that I was able to be that for a couple of kids Man, just an amazing privilege. 
Um, but I do regret that one situation um, where I had a, a hammer in hand um, because all along the way, specifically, I went face up, no mask, no weapons um, on purpose because I wanted to earn, you know, uh, the situation and do it properly on an even playing field. Um, so this next question is, is word for word. I think they said that he also had committed other crimes and that he was accused of domestic violence. Is that true? Uh, so, I will say, is that true? Yes. I pled guilty to, it was not uh, a domestic violence charge. It was a, I think they actually called it family violence, which means um, having an outburst or, or some sort of, behaving in a, in a threatening manner in front of your wife or your children or your wife and children. Um, and I did plead guilty to that years ago. Um, and I also, for sure, had a long criminal record. Um, and I'll tell you, and this is no justification for behave, behaving badly or, or you know breaking the law um, in any way, shape, or form. But what I will tell you is that uh, childhood trauma and sexual abuse is rocket fuel for addiction, criminality, um, lack of self-worth, um, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Um, so it's almost like the, the real answer to that question is, of course, of course I had priors, of course. And of course my life was a wreck. How could it have turned out any other way? I didn't address my childhood trauma directly in any manner. Didn't even know I should or I could until I was 45 years old and already sitting in prison. Uh, when are you up for parole next? So I have a discretionary parole hearing in, uh, between April 10th and 14th. Um, this year, in, a, in two months. So, um, the way the system works in the state of Alaska is after uh, a third or two-thirds of your sentence, you're eligible for discretionary parole. Um, and they have um, three options available to them. So, mind you, my mandatory release date is not till 2033. So, a decade from now, 10 more years. Um, so at this hearing, they can say, yes, um, parole granted, and let me out with, obviously, supreme preconditions and a very short leash. Um, number two, they can say, um, parole granted, but we want you to go take the following additional classes, and then you can get out in a couple of years. Um, or number three, they can just outright say, virtually with no reason, denied um, and then I will sit in this prison for an additional 10 years until my mandatory release date. What do you expect to happen at that parole hearing? Do you expect to get paroled or a sentence reduction or are you expecting anything? Well, I will tell you this. Number one, uh, and I mean this with zero sarcasm attached to the response. If what the state of Alaska um, has indicated in my life up until now remains true, then what I expect is to get absolutely nothing but an immediate denial and sit in here for another decade. Um, so there's that. However, if the state of Alaska chooses to uh, make a, a wise decision this time you have around, one minute left. Um, and actually care um, about their decision, then I would expect they would see you know, I've completed 43 classes. I have done a number, a long list of achievements since I've been in prison. Um, and I would also hope that they would look at, you know, something related to the equity in the sentencing between the pedophiles I assaulted and my own for assaulting them. Um, additionally, we've given them a, a risk assessment done by a, a PhD in criminology that scores me very low for reoffending. I would hope they would give that some credence um, and, you know, perhaps they'll make the right decision and they'll let me out. Um, honestly, I, I think there's a very small chance that that will take place, but I hope very much that it does. Um, because if it does, I will use my freedom wisely to bless and uplift others. Um, and it, it needs to happen. Thank you for using Securus. Goodbye. This is a prepaid collect call from Jason Vukovic. 
an incarcerated individual at Goose Creek Correctional Center. This call is not private. It will be recorded and may be monitored. If you believe this should be a private call, please hang up and follow facility instructions to register this number as a private number. To accept charges and consent to this recorded call, press 1. To refuse charges, press thank you for using Securus. You may start the conversation now. All right. Anyway, um, so, did you want to yeah, add so anything me, to uh, that last bit? Yeah, I was going to say, I, I have a peer group, um, and there is a generation or so coming up behind me and I experience them on the daily in this large prison that I'm currently in. And uh, there are also childhood abuse survivors. Um, and they need someone like myself that is experienced and knowledgeable and has learned things the hard way. Um, and they need someone, uh, we need someone um, that is knowledgeable and experienced um, in these various fields and aspects that I've experienced along the way. and. Uh, to get out and to speak um, to them in, in a manner and in a language that they understand. Um, and, you know, I just hope that the state of Alaska recognizes the potential value in making a proper decision here. Um, because, I mean, clearly, I will never assault another human being again. Um, you know, I it, it hasn't didn't take long for me to figure out um, pretty early on that, you know, life is a progression and that going forward it will be much more beneficial if I do something amazing for 10 survivors of childhood abuse as opposed to something negative to one child abuser. Um, so, I mean, uh, um, interestingly also, um, I told you we did a risk assessment. Um, a criminologist performed a risk assessment, and he said, you know, um, if their concern is that you might reoffend, your crime is assaulting sex offenders, and currently they have you housed in a prison that has such a large density of sex offenders um, that the only way that they can reduce, he could reduce my risk for reoffending is we need to hurry up and get me out of this prison. Um, so, sort of ironically, um, the way that they could, you know, if they're really concerned about um, sex offenders being assaulted or abused or something like that, um, then the, the most direct route to that would be to release me from this prison. Um, so there's that. But uh, I, I continue to hope, and again, like I said, um, if they make the right decision, trust and believe. I'll use my freedom wisely um, to benefit others. So when I posted about uh, doing a, a Q&A with you, the top two common, I guess, comments were... One, he's a hero, and two, how how could I help him out? So, would you like to take this time to direct people to the proper places to help you out, whether that's commissary, writing letters, so on and so forth? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, first of all, um, in light of the this parole hearing that I've got coming up, um, number one, uh, let's remember the uh, the Thomas Jefferson quote. He said, uh, opinion is power, so let's have one. Um, and the only way that these guys know what the community's opinion is is if we write to them and let them know. So anyone who feels so inclined, I would appreciate it. Write a letter or a quick note on my behalf, um, and it goes to uh, the Department of Corrections Parole Board. Um, attention, Executive Director Jeff Edwards, and the address is 619 East Ship Creek, Studio 241, Anchorage, Alaska, 99501. Um, and then if everybody goes to uh, the change.org, we have a petition there. And I've never seen the platform myself. Obviously, I live here. But I think you can just search the change.org uh, website for my name, and it'll pull up the petition. But sign there. And then uh, um, they can search or check out any of the online profiles that my sister has and just look for free Jason Vukovic. Um, and then obviously in the meantime, I'm here at uh, Goose Creek Correctional Center, uh, which is 22301 West Alsop Road, A-L-S-O-P Road, Wasilla, Alaska, 99623. So if anybody wants to write to me, they can. Uh, this this particular prison is very antiquated as far as letting people donate to you or anything like that. So aside from being an approved visitor, 
Um, I think my sister has a GoFundMe or something that they can find on that free Jason Vukovic platform. Um, and, you know, all, donations like that are always welcome. I appreciate it. Do you think that there are any misconceptions about you uh, out in the media? Well, so, again, mind you, I live in a concrete shoebox. Um, so, interestingly, for instance, I haven't seen the Internet in eight years, nine years. So, the majority of what has ever been said, honestly, I'm not even aware of it either way. Um the first, the, the greatest misconception, keep in mind some of the old masters said, heroes are made by public opinion, not by the actions of a man. Um, so anything I've done in my life was for very personal reasons. I'm a very private person. Um, there was nothing that I ever intended to be public or gain any notoriety at all. Um, all of this sort of thing is, is just accidental. Um, and then number two, I think it's, again, really, really important to point out that uh, um, some of the feedback I've gotten was, this guy's no hero, He's a, he was a criminal, and he had a criminal background, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, absolutely right, I did. I was a thief and a liar for years. I was an absolute mess, for sure. Um, and the thing that people need to understand is, number one, I have never said I was perfect or great or wonderful or even special. Not one time ever have I said that. Um, and it's worth mentioning that unless you properly address your childhood trauma when you are young, um, you know how to do that. Someone empowers you to do that. You find a way to pay for it or seek it out. Unless you do that, your life, too, will also be broken uh, in a whole variety of different ways. It's different for each one of us. Um, so some of that feedback was a little bit surprising to me that, you know, people were shocked or, or felt, you know, uh, felt self-righteous because I was a criminal in my past. Absolutely. I am exactly the sort of guy that would go and give up his entire life to go handle some business like that. I am exactly the type, <laughs> you know what I mean? It would take someone exactly as imperfect as me to do something like that, so, anyway. So how do you feel about your story going viral every so often and being regarded as a vigilante hero by many? Um, well, I mean, number one, um, accolades feel nice, you know? Uh, I don't feel alone anymore, and that was nice. I appreciate that. Um, number two, um, I want everybody to know um, that if you lived in mental, spiritual, or emotional bondage throughout the course of your life as a result of being abused, that it fucking sucks to then live in physical captivity as an adult um, in, in another sort of bondage. So I will tell you that there is nothing wonderful or amazing uh, about that. Um, it sucks. It's terrible, and I don't wish it for anyone else. Um, so if there's going to be accolades or people proud um, of what I did or whatever, I want it to come with a great caution um, that this path that I've lived is not pleasant, and I don't wish it for anyone else. Um, but at the same time, um, I think if you're an abused kid and you grow up and you have a chip on your shoulder against sex offenders, no one should judge you for that. Um, it's to be understood and respected. What would you say your top two regrets in life are, if you could pinpoint any? Man, in life? Oh, my God. Well, number one, uh, I wish... Uh, I wish somehow, some way, um, I would have known as a kid that my time could have been much better spent not in uh, church classes learning about the invisible plane and scary mythological beings and things like that. I wish I would have been in credit management and career selection class uh, <laughs> or physical fitness and personal hygiene maintenance classes or things like that, things that were tangible that mattered. Um, so I regret not knowing, um, you know, to extricate myself from spiritual land um, early on. And then uh, number two, um, I, I have a I have learned now the transformative power of of 
understanding what trauma does to you and addressing it and getting yourself healed. Um, and I wish I would have done that a long time ago because, you know, I was given a life sentence by a pedophile um, when I was seven or eight years old. Um, and had I known how to address that life sentence, my life could have turned out much different. Um, and who knows what it would have been. Um, so knowing that now is, is sort of what fuels my desire to get out and lead others to that outcome because um, you know I regret not knowing that do you still feel like you have that life sentence even though your story has touched many people and possibly helped others out there well what I what I know is that it altered my life permanently and I cannot go back and have what I've lost um, but what I also know is that uh, I wish to be like every other great person along the way that took adversity and calamity and, and personal loss um, and took responsibility for those things and then changed it um, into something beautiful. Um, and that's, that's what I'm trying to do. So before we get out of here, is there anything that you'd like to end with or talk about that we haven't got into? Um, well, you know, I just wish everybody to, uh, uh, you know, one of the things that I've found very interesting is I've, I've realized along the way, um, that I, and now it's, it's not until now that I have this very eclectic and wide ranging set of friends in my life, people that have come around me to support me. And they're from myriad backgrounds and, and various levels of success. And uh, what's been very interesting to me is that our common bonding factor was something that we survived as kids. Um, and the only way we came together was by bringing it out and saying so. I was sort of a, a lightning rod for people coming forward and saying so. Um, so I just would like to point out to everybody that I encourage you, if you've got it buried deep inside you, that it's nothing that you should be ashamed of. It's 100% uh, acceptable and it's 100% respected for you to have encountered and overcome something in your youth that was not your fault. Um, and the sooner you bring it forward and speak on it, um, one, one time, two times, here or there, the sooner you will find commonality and similarities in others around you. And uh, you will come to realize what I realized, which is, check this out. We, uh, together, we are so much bigger than any of the systems that are broken around us. We're huge. We're enormous. We are a giant, eclectic family, and most of us don't even know our brothers and sisters exist because we don't choose to speak about what happened to us. So it's something to think about going forward, um, you know, and maybe maybe we'll figure out a platform or a way for all of us to come together and, and you know, change some of the laws and some of the things for the Ghislaine Maxwells and, you know, Epstein's and things like that. These are not the people that should be running shit. They're horrible people um, and they're lacking any sort of moral code. Um, and we are the ones that can change that or fix that. So, anyway, I think that's about it. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, that was that was great. Um, yeah, we got about That was my Q&A with Jason Vukovic. If you'd like access to ad-free episodes, extra content, and more perks, head on over to patreon.com slash unforbidden truth. Thank you for listening. See you on the next one. Unforbidden truth. I'm 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 Unforbidden truth. I'm I'm Podcast.